Three, two, one, go. Hello, hello. Ignacy Czechek, PortalCon. No PortalCon, Portal Games. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the podfather of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. You are listening to episode 179 of Board Games Insider, and we're recording it on Sunday, January 24th, 2020, right after PortalCon ended, as you might have guessed. Board Games Insider is a proud member of the Dice Tower Network, and Tom Vassell refuses to acknowledge that we are the most important podcast on the Dice Tower Network. Can you believe, how, how is that not possible? Aren't we? Of course, our fans know it, and they're going to vote for us later this year for a Golden Geek Award. At least we hope. <laughs> You're fighting for your predictions. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm just fighting to win that award. I mean, uh, I think we're overdue. What do you think? We uh, deserve on. it. We deserve it. Absolutely. Okay. We definitely do. So without any uh, real delay here, I mean, PortalCon, we, I think you want to talk mostly about that and the news, the amazing news that you did. Um, so please take it away and tell us. Yes, I'm uh, 24 hours after PortalCon, a uh, huge stress, huge pressure, but a uh, huge joy of uh, finally, finally sharing the news. Portal Games is uh, doing a Dune game. Dune is the greatest uh, science fiction novel of all time. I will, of course, talk about this for months, upcoming months, but this is the novel uh, I read when I was in high school, when I was a teenager, and it, it was with me for my whole life, and then when we finally had a chance to negotiate the, the contract and uh, discuss possibility to create a Dune game. Of course, it was an absolute treat for me and me and my team uh, who created Detective now is working on a Dune game. The title is Dune House Secrets. It's a three chapters, uh, three missions game with a prologue. And I saw after Portal Con many questions from fans who said, I never read the book, uh, can I play the game? We hope, yes, we are preparing a special prologue and we are when we are playtesting the game, we have two groups. We say focus groups. This is the, I don't know, is this the right word? That is correct. Uh, two, groups, two groups of the playtesters and some of them uh, read the book and know the lore and enjoy the story. And then I have a special groups who never read the book and we play testing on them as well. So yes, we are preparing for both scenarios. Of course, I will talk about this more and more in upcoming months. But for me now is a, a great moment, great weekend to finally share this uh, great news. Dune House Secrets from Portal Games, story-driven game, three missions, you will discover a story and you will be on Arrakis, on this very planet and play cooperatively with your friends. Mm, at PortalCon we announced three new games and uh, the second one is Eleven, it's a sport game. Sport is not a very popular genre in, for board gaming, but I don't care, the game is amazing, I'm going to publish it anyway. And then we, we announced the amazing game from Bruno Faiduti called Dreadful Silkus. As well, we will talk more about this in upcoming months, but three new games announced. I'm very, very proud uh, of what we have for, for this upcoming uh, year. In my section for brag of the week, I will prepare some data for the next week. So I will brag next week. I promise you, I will be prepared for bragging. Uh, spoiler alert on our Polish announcement, because uh, uh, there was English announcement that I hope many of our listeners watched, but we before that, in our Polish time, we did a Polish announcement for our Polish uh, market. And I think uh, we beat the record of live audience in board gaming in history. So I will give you data next week, guys, but wow. prepare for bragging. Uh, it was insane <laughs> what happened in Poland uh, yesterday. Uh, for pre-order section of the of the of my in my segment, the Vienna Connection is on pre-order. Please check it out because if you miss it, you will be whining. I know that. And I will receive the emails from you that you missed that. You need to listen to me. You need to check out the website. The game costs 45 bucks and we are adding in this pre-order campaign goodies and promos and mini expansions worth 35 bucks. So it is like basically 80 bucks product that you are buying for half the price right now. So check it out, the spy game, Cold War era. Uh, you are going to be CIA agents sent to Europe to solve a uh, mystery. Where can, and I order, video of, can I order that at Portal Games US? Portal Game, what, how do I order it? I, I as, as far as I check the numbers, Podfather is getting stronger and stronger and becoming a real influencer in the industry. So you might have a, a free copy because they are now oh. becoming so popular that uh, I, we might say, send you a gift. I'm not yes, looking... 
I'm not looking for free copies. I, I will. I will be happy to order it. But tell everybody else. Tell everybody else at least where to order it. Where absolutely, to pre-order. you're you're absolutely right. Portalgamesus.com, uh, our website, portalgamesus.com, and you can find the whole information about the product, what goodies we are adding, what additional promos and new expansions we are adding, and then uh, you can become a spy. It's it's a really really uh, super 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 game. And Sounds then so the last cool. piece, last piece of news, the video of the week. Uh, last week I recorded and published a video that has a very good feedback and it was top 10 features of board game gig website it's super simple but we all use on our daily basis uh, board game gig somebody uses these features somebody uses these features and i gathered 10 best features of board game gig for the gamers and i described them how to use them why you can use them why they are helpful for the players and i think there's so many new players coming to our industry uh, learning about this website and yes i created a tutorial uh, so uh, you can check it out and check which of these 10 features you are using, guys. Uh, and I said a very good feedback on this video, so and I'm very, very grateful for that. So this is it. Basically, my main message is I'm doing Dune. I'm happy as a kid. <laughs> That is that is excellent. And that is a great, great announcement. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and the other ones as well in as part of my segment here. Um, first of all, my little challenge of the week to you guys out there is that I created a group associated with the Podfather of Gaming page. So go up and join the group. I'm not, you know, you, you get in right that you have to a- answer a few questions like who is Tom Vassell wrong? Yes or yes. So once you answer questions like that, you get you come in and join the group. Did you like the way I did that? Yes or yes. And then you join the group and you can follow with some of the things that's going on at Podfather of Gaming. Nice and easy there on Facebook. Um, I want to give another shout out to my buddy, uh, Kevin Bertram, who's so nice to send me uh, his new game, The Shores of Tripoli, a light war game. He heard that I like light war games, and this certainly is. It's got 80 wooden ships, 24 dice, mounted map, and a crap ton of cards in it. Uh, plays in 45 to 60 minutes, and you can certainly order it wherever you like to get your games or at www.fortcircle.com. It's Fort Circle Games. Um, videos of the week for me. Many, and the most important one really was the reaction video that I shot with Tom Vassell. Thank you. Dee Garcia yesterday morning where we reacted to Ignacy doing his keynote address at PortalCon where he announced three main games plus a whole bunch of other things, some that I had not heard of, some I had heard of. But um, you can go, I've linked it at the Podfather of Gaming YouTube channel, or it's directly, of course, also on the uh, Dice Tower YouTube channel. But check it out, uh, and you can see actual commentary. Now, you'll probably say, well, you would never say anything negative about Ignacy stuff, and that's true. I don't say negative about anything, so that's true. So you were silent for the whole time. (laughs) No, No, but you will see, you know, Tom's honest reaction, Z's honest reaction, and guess what? There was my honest reaction because I absolutely loved the stuff that you were announcing. Um, the the Dune game, oh my God, that sounds so interesting. Uh, the uh, the new Fight Duty game, which, you know, where you're playing cards to your tableau that you don't, you know, you don't even, you're going to be doing this and then getting cards that's going to score yourself and my scoring is going to be different than your scoring yep. that was my huge takeaway from that. i love yep. that there's a a sports game which is odd but if anybody can do that right it's going to be you so i was i was i was tentatively excited about that but then also the that whole party game where you're movie producers and trying to create the best movie against another team of movie producers i just thought that's so interesting so up my alley so Check that out at the Podfather of Gaming linked from the Dice Towers YouTube channel. I did so many things this week. You know, I, I think I got to uh, come out of retirement just to continue doing <laughs> doing podcasts and video streams. Another thing I did was of a gameplay, actually played twice, but the one that was recorded uh, of Not Alone, one of my favorite games uh, in the Stronghold catalog, Not Alone with the Incorrigible Party. Some friends of mine that I see at conventions, they've had me as NPCs in their Zoom game, uh, role-playing game, uh, and we had just a great time. I've posted, it's on their uh, YouTube channel, on their Twitch channel, but it's also on uh, the Podfather of Gaming. Check that out and check out 
an amazingly fun game and see who won the creature, which was me or the survivors. See who won. I played a, a made up game with rolling dice and taking names on their channel, on their Twitch and YouTube channel. It was called swipe left, swipe right. I thought I was going to go on a date with one of them or something like that, but it wasn't <laughs> dangerous. Dangerous. I might've been having a date with Tony, but um, it was, um, we were, we were talking about, they would they'd make a statement half the times about board games or the industry and half the times about something else, like something else geeky. And you would like swipe left if you disagreed or swipe right if you agreed. Cool. And then you would talk about it. It was really a lot of fun. It was about, we did that for about an hour uh, this week. Again, you can check that out either at Podfather of Gaming or directly at their YouTube channel. So I hope that you you go look at these things because they're a lot of fun. I mean, it's just a lot of fun for a one hour uh, romp. And I also did a podcast with a gentleman named Joseph Niramas out in the Netherlands. I believe he's Netherlands. Uh, so that he just dropped as well. So that's four different things that I did this week. It was crazy. Uh, am I retired? You need to take vacation. I, I tell you, you need to take vacation. I'm going to take a vacation as soon as I can get myself out there. Uh, without a doubt. Um, and of course, I'll just invite you again to come check out the happy hour with us every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern or Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Going to be doing it today, but that'll be after you uh, have heard that. Ignasi, busy week for both of us. Let's get to some news with the event deck. Absolutely. So what do we have here in the event deck? Some small company announced some little minor game. It's not going to be consequential at all right stronghold games announced the nobody's interested nobody. nobody's interested in this one strong games announced terraforming mars aries expedition uh, a standalone card game in the terraforming mars universe you can think of this as terraforming mars the card game some people said like well isn't it a card game already no it's a much bigger game if you think terraforming mars is a card game i think you're missing the point it's a card driven resource yep. management Yep. On what area control game, yeah. right? So um, I've obviously knew about this uh, well before um, this announcement occurred. Uh, it's been in the, the, the drawing room for well over a year. Uh, coming to Kickstarter, I believe it's uh, on February 16th. So uh, just a couple of weeks after this drops. Uh, I think that people who are fans of Terraforming Mars but don't necessarily have two, two and a half, three hours to play that game, you can sit down and play this game in an hour. It's, it's a it's distilled version that basically has cards. There is a little board in the middle with some, some, some things that you put there, some, some tokens and things like that. But this is truly a card game distilled version of Terraforming. Who's the designer? Who's the designer? So the designer is Jacob Frixelius with Nick Little, and Sydney, okay. Sydney Engelstein, right? So those are two uh, stronghold games people. Um, okay. Nick is Nick is noted for the for co-designing parts of of Aeon's End and Aeon's End Legacy, and all of the Aeon's End projects. Co-designing with, uh, with with the main designer there, and Sydney Engelstein, of course, is the director of game development at Stronghold Games. Now, yeah. sort of took over what I was doing, and she's doing an amazing job. And she's a designer in her own right with many designs. Um, under her belt that she did mostly with her father, Jeff. Jeff Engelstein, of course. So very excited to be seeing that coming out. The next piece of news is something that, of course, Boring. I have been, <laughs> that I have been you know, following closely. So I, um, I went and I researched where Simon was with their resumption of trading on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So in short, because there's not a lot of news here other than Simon has addressed all of the audit issues, which and those audit issues caused them to cease trading. The, the exchange said, nope, sorry, you have to address these issues to our satisfaction before we can, we can allow you to continue publicly trading. They have now addressed those issues and they have submitted that information to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange for review. So assuming Hong Kong Stock Exchange says, hmm, let me say yes, good, good, good. Okay, great. They're going to resume trading at some point. You'll be able to buy CMON stock at some point in the near future. Hopefully, I am not your financial advisor. I am not giving you any financial advice here. Just make that clear. But you can follow this. And of course, we'll be reporting on it to me 
this is some of the most interesting stuff, boring to Ignacy, but some of the most interesting stuff to me because a major player in hobby gaming is actually a publicly traded company. And they're not even that big, but they're publicly traded and you can actually go check them out and see their stock price and things like that. I'll continue looking into this when they're actually able to resume you, their you, trade. You, you will keep boring us, okay? I, will, I think people love this. Heck with you. Even, even Tom was interested in this. I talked about it on Board Game Breakfast. So we have something, some really, I would say, good news that Origins... Uh, which obviously normally is like the beginning of the summer convention season goes and takes place in June. They have announced new dates for 2021 because of COVID. Of course, they pushed it out into the beginning of the fourth quarter. So it's September 30th through October 3rd uh, game. Uh, so it's the game yeah, manufacturer association announced that they have pushed back the the Origins game fair till the fall. Um, it was re- originally scheduled for June 16th to 20th, and they've decided to move it to these new dates due to the pandemic. Um, it will be an in-person convention, but attendees may be required to adhere to certain safety guidelines. Organizers are still developing the guidelines, but they may include uh, requiring attendees to wear face masks, social distance, temperature checks. I guarantee all of that stuff is definitely going to be part of this, um, depending on where we are in the in the, uh, the vaccine rollout and things like that. So Ignacy, I'm, I'm excited and I will be in Columbus, Ohio if this thing runs without a doubt. Don't worry, I have my Slavic comment on that. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> and, and, but being serious, uh, looking at the bigger picture, what I can see, I can see that in 2020 uh, conventions had to be closed. Uh, they had to survive this one year without being run. And this is the second year with COVID. And uh, in my opinion, it is for them the time to desperately be run at some point, at any point of the year, because they need to uh, to happen. And what I'm afraid of, uh, what I'm concerned, is that all these spring and summer conventions will try you know, to delay itself to, to fall season. And it may be the case that in fall season, we will have all the conventions from the whole year, like because they want to be run impossible in spring so they will all be moved to the fall season i know that uh, during portal con uk game expo announced the new dates i haven't seen them because i was of course at portal con but i just saw the newsletter that they're uh, changing dates as well so uh, what i'm afraid what i'm concerned is that in uh, september and october we'll have uh, i don't know six shows and of course it is impossible so we will see how other conventions will react mm, uh, but this is my concern can you find uh, at your leisure, not like necessarily right now, can you find the link to the UK Games Expo? Yes, and I will add it for the, for the next week. Yeah, because I'd like, I'd like to know. And I might, depending on when it's running, I might, I might go. I still have never been to the UK Games Expo, but I want to go because I hear it's so great. So, it's uh, so Nassim- great, and there is these, uh, these uh, pups with the beer. So for you, oh, I guess. I love English just beer. Just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's why I'm going to be going, right? So we're going to do a lot of news today. So the next thing, again, in the convention space. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, just, I just got it. Uh, new dates. Okay. Uh, Friday, Friday, uh, 30th July to Sunday, 1st August. Oh, so they're running it literally right before Gen Con and actually during the World Board Gaming Championships, which is a small convention out in the in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And usually it was May, as, as you remember. Usually it was May and now they are moved to the right. uh, July, August. So I will weekend. not be going <laughs> to the UK Games Expo this year. That would be crazy. I am going to be going, assuming it runs, to the World Board Gaming Championships. My, my very good buddy Chad uh, goes every year and a bunch of friends go. Obviously, they didn't go last year. It didn't run. But I'm I'm going. I've already committed to going with him. I'm going to fly up to uh, to Pennsylvania. It's around the Pittsburgh area. So thank you for that information. Um, so there we go. So it's move those dates for the UK GE. Uh, hopefully the UK fans can uh, can go there uh, and, and enjoy that safely. The Gen Con Spring Showcase has been announced for March 1st through 7th. What is that? They've never done anything in the spring. That's crazy talk. Well, I don't even know if it's truly public, but exhibitors found out 
that this is happening. I think it might be public by now. Um, so they're doing a, a mini online show. It's online and only. And they've announced all kinds of ways that you can uh, sponsor this show uh, because Gen Con is probably bleeding money. No offense to Gen Con. They do a great job at their shows. But um, they would like sponsors and the packages are, as usual, fairly expensive. And people, uh, uh, sp uh, exhibitors, air quotes, the virtual exhibitors will be able to uh, put their games up there and show them off. They, I have no other information other than the dates are March 1st through the 7th, and that's coming up pretty darn quickly. So unless they start getting this information out soon, I don't know how many exhibitors are going to be here and then how much this this is going to be worth it to the gamers then. So, Ignacy, did you even hear about this until... Uh... Yes, I did. Okay. I have this suggestion that we switch our roles because I'm still in the industry working here. So, uh, me complaining and whining on everybody in the industry is a bad strategy for my company. So, if we can switch roles, you will be the complaining guy and criticizing everybody and I'll be this uh, happy, nice guy who loves everybody because... <laughs> It's so difficult for me to comment on the industry news when I'm always complaining on somebody. You know me, Ignacy. I am I am Joe Positivity, right? I'm always happy and always positive. I have a lot of reasons to be happy. Life's been good. But um showcase means that they they allow us publishers to be presented on, the, on their channels. My very short question is what channels Gencon has and what's the audience? And I rest my case. Like uh, <laughs> why why I need to pay thousands of dollars. To, where is these big channels of Gen Con? I don't know. You're not going to believe this, but I just asked. Oh, okay. I got it back. I accidentally shut down my sh the show notes. <laughs> 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 I, I got it back. I got it back. It's on uh, Google Drive. So it's so annoying though. I don't. So, so oh, one second being serious with yeah. my mean comments. Like, I mean, you pay for, for advertisement, whether it is a TV, whether it is press, whether it is Facebook, whatever, right? You pay for the eyeballs. This is the word you're using in America, eyeballs. Yes. Yep. You eyeballs. get people's attention, right? Yep. So if Gencon wants uh, us publishers to be presented on this uh, showcase, we publishers ask, where are the able, eyeballs? Yes. Who will be watching this? How many people will watch this, these streams? And there is a lack of this information as for now, uh, as, as we record. Good point. Good point. Let's but find the prices, the prices, prices are there already. So we already know how much we pay. Yeah. We just don't know what we'll get back. Yeah, and it's and it's not cheap, right? You saw those prices. I mean, you know, some of those packages were upwards of twenty five hundred dollars. So that's you know significant amount. So what's what's going to be the payback on that? It's it's yep. all about that. So I I always I wish all of these conventions the best of luck. I hope it goes. I hope fans can can have a good time. So let's see how it. Before we comment too much, let's see how it works. New York Toy Fair, which would be running very close to the time that this podcast is dropping, probably within uh, two weeks after that. Normally, it's over the uh, what we call the President's Day uh, holiday weekend, um, Valentine's Day area. Um, the New York Toy Fair has been officially canceled. Uh, this is not a huge hobby game industry event. Uh, it's a huge, huge, huge event for toys and games. Like, I mean, like the biggest of the biggest companies, Mattel and Hasbro have these huge blown out areas and, and the, the smaller retailers show up and look at what the latest things are. But there's a, there, there's a growing presence there uh, for hobby games, a few aisles at this point. Uh, and sadly, uh, it has been canceled for this year. We're getting to the point where a full year of things um, have been canceled. So we, uh, uh, but when, once we get around to, uh, to Gamma, we have like one full year of, of cancellations. Yep. So not much to report here other than, than that has happened. Uh, and they have not announced, you know, any like delay or, or, or pushback of this. It's simply a, a cancellation for this year. They do run other events during the year, like the Dallas Toy Fair and things like that. So those will potentially go on later this year. The crowdfunding platform that we talked about in our predictions episode that Ignacy made a very bold prediction on, their first uh, first campaign ended. Of course, it was a biggie, biggie, biggie uh, by Awaken Realms. It did five million U.S. dollars, and that is that bodes for a good start to this 
to this as being a competitor to to Kickstarter. So Ignacy, have any other even started yet on this platform yeah, so, is my question. Uh, my, my, my point of view here is uh, that they did the safe first step starting the campaign of their own game because they have this huge fan base. They have these uh, many million dollars campaigns uh, in, the, in the key story. So it was this first safe step. Let's do our Kickstarter. Let's make it successful. And they yep. did it. If this successful, if this uh, campaign would be not successful, game found is over. Like nobody would believe that another campaign can be successful if they cannot run successful own campaign. Right. They did the first step. It was very successful, and now they are looking for other, uh, for other, of course, uh, creators to go there. I know, but this is behind the scene knowledge, so I, I, I'm not sure if I can share. So I will not share, but I know about uh, a couple of Kickstarters that will happen in these upcoming months. Uh, so yes, I know there will be other creators, uh, other companies that will mm -hmm. use GameFound. Uh, I know that we as a portal games uh, are also uh, discussing that and uh, it might be some announcements upcoming weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm already after like a, a demo for the partner, demo for the publisher from the game phone. Like they showed us uh, how they are different from Kickstarter, what the different features the website has, what they, what they are providing. And uh, without revealing too much, I can say one main message. They try to be competitive which is very good for the whole industry. Like whatever sure. will happen in the upcoming months, if they are going to be successful or not, they are putting pressure on Kickstarter. And it's always good when there's a competition in the in the area, right? So Absolutely. yes, they presented us a couple of tools that Kickstarter doesn't have. And now we will see if it will be enough for different content creators to come mm -hmm. to them and start using them. So Kickstarter will say, hey, we see a competition here. We start to up our game, right? I see at least uh, seven new projects, one, two, three, six new projects that are out there right now. So that's interesting, uh, including like some IP stuff too. Um, the Thing, the board game. So that's based on there the are, there cult are, movie. I think they're also using this as a late pledge manager. So there are campaigns that uh, were finished and they offer this, uh, our website can do for you late pledge. And this is also very interesting. Sure, sure. Very, very, very good stuff here. Um, I wish them the best because competition is always a good thing uh, yep. in all industries. So very yep. good. Gamefound.com if you want to sign up and just check out what's going on and see if Ignacy is going to be. If I talk about it enough, Ignacy, you're you're gonna you're gonna get that that prediction correct. And I don't really want that to happen, right? Do I? <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. No, I actually I I hope I lose those those kind of things because that means that another company is doing very well. So that's that would be very good. Um, Magic the Gathering Arena goes mobile. So now, so you put this one up here. You follow the, the this kind I, of stuff. So tell me about because, it. Yes, this is a huge news uh, for Magic the Gathering, and that means for the whole industry. And, uh, we reported last year, especially when the COVID hit, uh, that Magic the Gather Gathering has this arena uh, uh, app that is used on uh, PCs on on. Um, on computers and people are now playing uh, Magic the Gathering there and there are these tournaments you can play and uh, the Wizard of the Coast was supporting uh, stores that stores were able to run uh, tournaments on this platform and it was very successful but now we have this another step of uh, digitalization, digitalization of Magic the Gathering and now you can play Magic the Gathering on your phone. And this is huge because, of course, players have time after uh, after hours in the night to start the PC. But now you can play in the train. You can play, you know, when you're in the traffic to work, when you are, you know, sitting in school and being bored. Like you can play Magic now anywhere on your mobile. And this is uh, yeah. so much more people playing at any point and joining the events. Uh, I cannot explain how huge it is for the Magic the Gathering community. It was a huge news on the forums for Magic yeah. the Gathering. And we can see that, it's, it's I, huge. I, yeah, this is this is tremendous news. And in fact, uh, this will start in, in like beta, uh, early access, they're calling it, uh, on January 28th. So the day after this drops, you can go and get it on Android first and then iOS um, uh, will will be coming later on uh, in the year. So I'm I, while I'm not now a Magic player, this is something that I would sign up for just to check it out because yeah. I, I like Magic. I think it's a great system. Phenomenal. Obviously, it stood the test of time. It would be very, very interesting to 
to see how this all plays out. Um, maybe this will get me back into a little bit of Magic the Gathering. Very cool news for players of Magic the Gathering and generally for the industry. So more acquisitions, huh, in the industry. But it's not Asthma Day. So here whoa, we whoa, have... Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so Is it even in, possible? <laughs> is it even possible? Yeah, well, we know that it is. So... Um, uh, game companies combined, it's DV Giochi acquiring Genos, uh, an Italian company named uh, D D A Vinci, D A Vinci, which is also known as DV Giochi. I don't know how why they make these crazy names. Oh, so it's Da Vinci, also known as DV Giochi, right? Um, <coughs> excuse me. And they're very known for bang the card game and bang the dice game and all that, all those. That's their flagship project. They're acquiring Genos, uh, which is known for some bigger titles, I believe. Um, they're not particularly a big company that I know of, uh, but these two companies are similar to maybe like Stronghold Games, Indie Boards and Cards. They're very complementary. They don't have an overlap really in the things that they do. So it's, it's something that I had predicted Oh, that that was going to start happening. We would see more of this consolidation where, you know, a, a good, strong company acquires or merges with another good, strong company or somebody that is complementary to their main product line. So um, good to see that happening with non asmodee companies. Yeah, but I was trying to find, uh, because I definitely rec uh, recognize the logo of the company. So I definitely either have their games or at least play their games. But right now, I don't remember which ones. I know that the David Giochi is a big publisher in Italy. Sure. So, so this one, of course, is a main publisher in, uh, in Italy. Mm -hmm. And as you always say, consideration is good for the business. So uh, good for them, right? Good for them. That's right. But now we do get to Asmodee buying companies. And in this case, Asmodee is buying something different. A French retailer called Philibert. Now, this is actually kind of old news, uh, but something that nobody reported on until just recently. So I picked it up. In July 2020, according to French game site Ludovox, the Asmodee Group purchased French online retailer Philibert, which also runs three stores in Strasbourg. Ludovox notes that Philibert employs 78 people with annual revenue of about 16 million euros. Um, and uh, Google Translated excerpt is by buying a large online sales site in this way, Asmodee can already save on a portion of its game sales by reintegrating the direct margin sales into the group. Yada, yada, yada. That means they're going to make more money by selling direct. But, I but, but this is particularly interesting because this is the first major move of Asmodee really into retail. Uh, they, they're... they're completely vertically integrated. And that means in business terms, they take the product from the absolute beginning design, you know, design phase. And before that, the creation of the design to the design, to making the product, to, to the distributor, which they own. And now they're going to the retailer. So that, may, that would make them 100% vertically integrated. They're obviously doing it now in one particular market, uh, the French market, uh, but there, this is a big French online store with actual retail locations. So an interesting move, something that I, in my head, I always thought would happen that they would start creating uh, actual sales channels for, you know, that they owned. So let's see how this plays out. Yeah, the, 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 the similar situation is in Poland because uh, Rebel Games, uh, Asmodee Poland is also a distributor and also a retailer the biggest online retailer in Poland. Uh, so in Poland, they already have it covered. And uh, I'm absolutely not happy with that. Uh, I, I complained on that many, many times that being a publisher and distributor and retailer at the same time is, uh, is quite achievement and it's difficult to compete with such a company. So he, here in Poland, I struggle with my friendly competitor Rebel Games every single day. And uh, yes, this is uh, what I was always concerned about. And that Asmod is so big that they have now they have their own distribution, then they will have their own retailers. And at some point they can say, we don't need you. <laughs> and they will just say that we are we have covered everything. We have the old channels 
as you mentioned, from designing games through the production, through the distribution, yeah. to the end customer. And this is for me a little bit terrifying. And it is. Um, it becomes it. And I've always talked about the, most of the things that Asmodee has done as being good things. Most have been good things for the industry. But at some point, good things become bad things. And if they get too big, too powerful, and can and and completely get to that they also control retail, even selectively, that certainly could be a bad thing. Will they do it in Poland? Will they do it in the U.S.? Uh, you know, these are. The U.S. is a huge market, so they can never control retail in the U.S., not in, not in our foreseeable future. But the more this happens, the the more interesting but not necessarily good it becomes. Let's move on. We'll have definitely more to report on that as it goes on. Sarah Erickson, wonderful individual over at Renegade Games, has been promoted to the VP of sales and marketing. She was director of sales and marketing. And as you all may remember out there that we recently reported that Matt Holland was hired to become manager of sales and marketing. So obviously uh, he is reporting to her and she has been, um, I've been promoted to vice president. So she's now an officially an officer of the firm. Uh, and her focus is gonna go to reaching um, focus on reaching fans of licenses. So Renegade Game Studios has promoted Sarah Erickson from Director of Sales and Marketing to Vice President of Sales and Marketing, the company announced. In her new role, she will have a special focus on reaching fans of Renegade's expanding roster of Hasbro licenses, which we did report on as well. This promotion is not only a recognition of her capabilities, but her track record over many years. Renegade president and publisher Scott Gaeta said of the move. She's one of our top people in the she is one of the top people in the industry, and I couldn't be more pleased um, that she's on our team. Um, kudos to Sarah. She is a good friend and a wonderful person. So I'm very excited that she's gotten that promotion and Renegade continues to just kill it. Yeah, for me, what, what was said in the press release, uh, I said in my very Slavic, honest thing, Sarah is the top person in the industry. Like, uh, uh, my my all interaction with her, of course, very brief at the conventions, but also when I was uh, you know, looking at what, what Renegade Games is doing, what they're achieving, uh, and I know she was involved in so many of the projects uh, with retailers and distribution, uh, absolutely top person in the industry. Uh, so uh, kudos for pro promotion. In my perception, she was always like super like second person in the Renegade Games anyway. Absolutely. Uh, great talent. Great, great, great talent. So the next one, we'll do one more news story. Uh, and this is just interesting, funny um, on the CCG side of the industry. Katy Perry, noted singer-songwriter, headlines Pokemon's 25th anniversary. Uh, she, she, was the, she performed at the Super Bowl only about five years ago. So you're talking about somebody who's pretty big here. The Pokemon company gears up for a big year. Pokemon Company is launching a major celebration of the brand's 25th anniversary, including multiple music partnerships, headlined by Katy Perry. Video games, mobile apps, animation, merchandise, and more. The music collaboration come via an overall deal with Universal Music Group and will include additional artists in addition to Perry, who touted her Pokemon cred. Quote, Pokemon games... I'm sorry, Pokemon has been a constant in my life from playing the original video games on my Game Boy to trading Pokemon TCG cards at lunch to the adventures of catching Pokemon on the street with Pokemon Go, Katy Perry said in a statement accompanying the an announcement. So amazing, you know, she's a geek. Who, who doesn't love that? A beautiful geek. And I have to say that for the first time, Steven and also Ignace, we are a little bit too old to get excited about Pokemon because uh, when the game had its prime, we were already old. Uh, but yes, basically for the geek culture, it, it's awesome. And my kids uh, who, who love Pokemon uh, probably will be very, very happy. And I'm going to challenge everybody to, to go out and Google Katy Perry Pokemon 25th anniversary, something like that, <laughs> because you're going to see her in a photo that's so crazy over the top 
this photo is amazing. It's it's this beautiful glam photo uh, in this wild dress uh, with a Pikachu like tail at the back of the dress. Did, 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 have you, did you see it, Ignacy? Did you click on this? Not thing? yet. I will. I will have oh. to stop recording. <laughs> it's great. It's it's an absolutely crazy photo. But it's but, but kudos to to her and to Pokemon for tr really bringing the product, a gaming product. Uh, to to the masses in a way, and Pokemon's a real game, you know. Yep. It yep. might be a basic, you know. No, it's a CCG. It's a CCG. You, sure. you are they building or getting cars? It is a full blown game. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's all the news we're gonna do uh, for this week. We even have more, but we're going long. Are we doing any uh, any questions this week? No, we go to playtesting because uh, okay. Ignace Ignace is. Is really tired and exhausted after after yesterday. It's a miracle that I'm recording. Let's, uh, let's say that. <laughs> All right. So no, we will not take any questions. No strategy and tactics this week, but we promise to come back with lots of them for next week. Yep. Let's go directly to our play testing segment. So here we have a question from me this week, and this one is to all of the people out there and to Ignasi. Um, People who go to in-person conventions normally, if we go back to in-person conventions in 2021, and of course, I believe we will, I've made predictions to the such that we will, will you be attending them? And if so, which uh, will you attend the first convention that you normally would attend, for instance, or would you normally, like, like if you would normally attend Gen Con and it runs, would you go this year? Or will you wait to a later time to attend in-person conventions. So Ignasi, first you, are you gonna go to the first major convention that runs or are you gonna wait a little while longer? It's a very difficult question. I have uh, all these thoughts uh, in head and uh, debating and uh, probably my answer will be different uh, on different days. Uh, on the one hand, I wait for vaccine and when I have this, my vaccine, uh, I feel uh, safe and I can go everywhere and I'm very, very happy. On the other hand, if I'm not yet uh, vaccinated, uh, should I go to convention? I guess uh, if I spend whole year in lockdown, there was a reason for that because I didn't want to risk. So going to convention after being uh, for the year, whole year in lockdown would be stupid. I don't know. I'm, I'm still debating. Uh, on the one hand, I'm so desperately you know, looking forward to go outside and meet people and go for a convention. On the other hand, waiting for, for these uh, vaccines I don't know. Like at this point, I have so many thoughts, and I don't know what what to do. Oh, but but you have to answer. If Gen Con runs, will you be there? No. Oh, okay. So you will wait a little longer. Is that's that's the answer to the question? Uh, at this point, I'm still w w watching what's happening in Poland with the vaccine program uh, and uh, how fast it is possible. Uh, I don't want to go into politics, <laughs> but no, yeah, no, I understand but it completely. Doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't look like uh, we have this vaccine in uh, two or three months. Uh, it may take longer, and the question is then, how much longer we have to be in the lockdown? Sure. If, for example, the distribution of vaccine will take two years, should I be in the lockdown for the number two years? Like right. at this point, I'm so confused with the situation. Sure. Because sure. we had this report report at the beginning of the January. The vaccine is here. Yes, uh, finally distribution. Pfizer in doing that. We are all happy. And then we learn the distribution of this of this of this medicine is not that easy. And once right. again, a little bit of frustration. Right. So here's my answer to this question. So the answer is, and I I've obviously I've hinted at it many times. If the convention runs, Bonacore will be there. Uh, if I'm not vaccinated at that time, I will approach that convention very differently than if I am vaccinated. In all cases, still doing all the right things hand sanitizing, washing, masks, all the social distancing. But obviously, you know, you can really get down to the nitty gritty of gaming if you've got that vaccine and, and then, then, you know, then you're safe, you know, then you're safe. Yeah. But I'm going to go, if Gen Con runs, it's in person. If they put some things in there, vaccines might be one of the things they put in place. Who knows? Like that they, you must have it. Who knows? Let's say they don't and I can't get it. I will still go, but I will do it in the right way. Hopefully I'm vaccinated by then. And then I can really experience it, play games, yep. get close with a little bit closer with people and things like that. So everybody out there, what do you think? Will you go, if you do go to conventions, will you go to the first major convention that you normally would go to? 
If not, will, will you wait just a little while longer to go to your first convention? Right now, Ignacy is gonna create a thread in our playtesting, uh, uh, in our guild, yep. under playtesting episode 179, I believe this is, and he's gonna ask you that question. So Ignacy, go please do that while I, and we all go to the final scoring. Thank you so much for listening. Help us spread the word about this podcast by telling your friends to download Board Games Insider wherever they like to get their podcasts. To ask us questions for our strategy and tactics segment, you must post them in the correct thread in our guild on Board Game Geek. And to answer our question to you from our playtesting segment, also go to our guild on Board Game Geek and look for the thread with this episode's question. Board Games Insider has a Facebook page, so please like us on Facebook. Also on Facebook, like Ignacy's pages and Steven's page, Portal Publishing, slash Portal Publishing, and slash Podfather Gaming. The websites, portalgames.pl, portalgamesus.com, and portal and, <laughs> and podfathergaming.com. Go there, sign up for the newsletters, get up to the information on what's happening at Portal Games and with the Podfather. And of course, as Ignacy said, I think you can go pre-order Vienna Connection at portalgamesus.com. I, I think you should because you're going to be whining because it's going to be sold out immediately. On social media, you can speak directly to Ignacy and Steven on Twitter at Portal Games US and at Podfather Gaming. Same on Instagram and the YouTube channels, which are quite active. Portal Games Movies, Portal Games Gameplays, and the Podfather of Gaming. We hope to see you at an upcoming convention as soon as we can. Probably Bonacore before Ignacy. We'll see. Board Games Insider was professionally edited by Matthew Jude from This Game is Broken podcast. And if you'd like him to edit your podcast, if you got one, please contact him on Twitter or at This Game is Broken podcast at gmail.com. Ignacy, that brings us to the end. Anything special? Any little tidbit that you want to share that you have not mentioned anywhere else? Since yesterday, I don't have any little tidbits. I have only one tidbit. I'm doing Dune, baby. Dune, baby. Ignacy's doing a Dune game. Woohoo! It's going to be a That's big, awesome. big year for Dune. I can't wait to hear how it all yep. plays out and stuff like that. But uh, um, excited for the movie, excited for this game, excited, excited, excited. So yep. congrats on that. Everybody out thank there, you. thank you so much for listening. Hopefully, you're watching sometimes too here on the YouTube channel of the Podfather of Gaming. We'll see you in a week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, uh, wait. I stopped. This recording haven't stopped yet. <laughs> Hold on.